Netflix. I've been a Netflix subscriber for like decades now, or like mid 2000s. Most of these companies, I never thought it would get to where it's at. I remember one of my friends was super bullish on Netflix because he, this was back in the DVD days, because he was like, right when Netflix started streaming, he was like, Netflix is super undervalued because they have this deal with stars where they get to just restream all the stars content and it's super cheap. They're only paying like $100 million a year. So it was super bullish on Netflix and then their stock went up, you know, whatever huge amount. And then, you know, they would try to spin off their DVD business and into this new site called Quickster that kind of take the stock. But like they're, you know, it's become this behemoth, this like content king. Stripe. I met the Collisons a long time ago. They had partnered with a friend of mine, Harsh Tagger, on their first company. It was called like Octomatic. It was like auction software, which I think they sold to some company in Canada for like right when they started. It was like around 2007 or something like that. And then Patrick and John like went to MIT, or maybe just one of them did, for a year, I want to say, and then came, dropped out and came back to like start a company. And I remember Paul Graham, they were like hanging out at Paul Graham's house. And then like I ran into them at Paul Graham's house one time, they were like talking about the new company, which was called Dev Payments at the time. It was like this gonna be payment infrastructure. And I really should have put two and two together because we had struggled with authorize.net, which was like an early kind of Stripe competitor that had a horrible API. But I remember thinking like, oh man, it's so expensive. Like they're gonna charge like 5% something like that, some ungodly amount that wasn't really feasible for any real business. But what I should have remembered is that you can always lower your prices. The hard part is like building an amazing product, which they did. And, um, you know, obviously they grew and grew and grew and grew. Uh, the first engineers we tried to recruit for Twitch went to work at, instead at Stripe. It was like really close. He was, yeah, he almost joined Twitch because he loved Twitch, but he went to work at Stripe as like, I don't know, one of their first, if, if not their first employee, one of their very first employees, which is a, probably a much better move for him. Another point, they tried to recruit a friend of mine and almost gave him, I want to say, 8% of the company. And he turned it down. Wah, wah. It's all right. He still made it. The first time I heard about TikTok was from one of our young employees at Atrium. And they were like talking about how they're watching videos on TikTok all day. I was on my old guy shit. I'm just like, what the fuck is that? That sounds like a waste of time. I wasn't using it for the longest time. I, I just didn't try it. And then we were talking about Charlie D'Amelio and how she's grown to like, you know, whatever. And tens of millions of followers. And I just wasn't with it until a year ago when we're starting this YouTube channel. And then Jen, my producer is like, yo, you got to be on TikTok. Like, and I was like, ah, I don't know. And so she created our my TikTok account and just started posting like old content to it. And then I started looking at it and I was like, oh, this is kind of like what we wanted to build with social cam 10 years ago, but it actually works. And so I got into it and I started like, understanding TikTok and trying to learn me some memes. The rest is history. Silicon Valley started taking TikTok seriously, probably well after the rest of the world that did. I think it's like only, you know, in the last, even like a year ago, right? Or maybe like 18 months where people were like, oh, this is like a huge platform. And this really controls culture in this big way. I remember YouTube in 2005, when it came out, it was basically like a way to embed videos on your MySpace page, as you could put this flash into your MySpace. And I thought that was pretty cool. I remember studying YouTube as a mechanism of viral growth. One of the founders of YouTube, uh, Jawed, had worked at PayPal and allow people to put a PayPal widget on their eBay auction page. And that was like a mechanism of growth. And so YouTube did that for MySpace and that's how they grew. And then later on, we did a lot of the same things with Justin TV and, and then Twitch. We put embeds. You, there was like a code so you could put an embed on any web page. So you could have your live video on your, you know, on any page, including your MySpace page or whatever. And uh, that was a huge way that we grew. I met Steve a couple times before. I mean, I've met Chad. I met them all actually. Yeah, I met all the YouTube founders before. Okay, cool. Normal, great human beings.